Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Comrades and friends, ladies and gentlemen, tonight is the night when you must go home and ponder on the decision you will make tomorrow. I would not be naive, so naive as to believe that everyone in this audience and those viewing at home on various social media platforms are all positive and confident about what they will do tomorrow. First, in going to the polling station, and secondly, in casting your vote correctly. As I said last evening, I am absolutely dumbfounded that leadership of a political party in Dominica could be advising voters to go into a polling station and spoil their ballots. How much more ridiculous can we get? Is there no moral, ethical minimum for these guys? So warped in their thinking that they are asking voters to reverse the hands of time. A right and a privilege that our forefathers fought and died to secure for ours and future generations is being thrown down the drain tonight by a group of malcontents who amazingly up to tonight are still divided among themselves as to what their position is and should be. They met with election observers this past weekend and ended up meeting in separate groups as a party. Edison James and Lennox Clinton met on Saturday as one half of the UWP. And Thompson Fountain met two days later as the leader of the party. Now, even the observers are confused. Can you believe this madness is happening in Dominica in 2022? I am Prime Minister. I am Prime Minister. I have an entire country to run. But as political leader of the Dominican Labour Party, I led each delegation of the Labour Party to every meeting convened by the observers. This is how, this is how a serious political party functions, ladies and gentlemen. But they are so ready for office and for contesting elections that they have divergent views on what really their grievances are. Some say it is electoral reform. Others said not enough time was given for the opposition parties to get ready. Still, another senior official admitted that the biggest problem was lack of money and, ab and absence of volunteers on the ground. My question to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is what does, it, what does all of these personal issues and circumstances have to do with the conduct of elections in Dominica. They are telling you not to vote, but they are in Salisbury in color orange, saying orange is a new blue. And then the same leadership of the UDLP is in Marigat, in the color purple, saying purple is a new blue. They refuse to contest the elections, but now tonight they are frantically trying to get at least two independent elected so they can buy them out over the next few months and ease themselves back in parliament. Does that make any sense to you, ladies and gentlemen? You walked out of the front door and jumping back in through the side window. This is political madness, if ever, there was such a thing. Have you ever heard or seen such confusion, ladies and gentlemen? This is a sort of political drama that one would expect from Spike Lee or even William Shakespeare. They are suggesting you play Russian roulette with your vote when scores of households in the southeast of Dominica are not sure where they will lay their heads this Christmas. They are rolling the dice to, divide, to decide whether 
on how to vote when hundreds of Dominican students abroad waiting on government to send their tuition fees and help with the housing allowance. The UWP has the luxury tonight of fooling around with the issues of voting while I have six people, sick people in Dominica requiring urgent decisions on the source and process of care. Orange is the new blue. Purple is the new blue. Brown is the new blue. But in reality, there's nothing new about blue. It's the same old disconnected organization controlled from living rooms of three octogenarians, ladies and gentlemen. The political Gene Rami that they're playing is fun for them. But for those of us who know and understand government and governance, we cannot keep this country in drift mode for much longer. None of them is there, in there has broken a sweat for 10 year, young, 10 long years. They have no business, they have no professions, they have nothing invested in this country. They are just political noise makers. On the other hand, those of us who are interested in the welfare and development of this country will need to have some very serious conversations in the new year. We need to act on a series of far-reaching issues, many of which have no origin or resolution here in Dominica, but which will impact us gravely if we do not let our voices be heard as one on what decisions are taken internationally. I said last night, climate change is not an abstract issue for Dominica and Dominicans. Global warming is not an esoteric, is not esoteric for us. The buildup of nuclear arms by some is not a joke when you live where we live. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, Dominica has got to begin to push a regional and international narrative that will require buy-in from us all. That is why I'm actually looking forward to having Thompson Fountain perform the role of political leader of the UWP. As someone who has lived abroad for many years, I believe he will be a little wider and broader in his focus. Edison James and Lennox Linton were too narrow-minded. For them, everything was about fighting and scoring cheap political points. Can you believe they did not openly support or endorse our bid to have a Dominican elected Secretary General of the Commonwealth? Baroness Scotland ran twice, and we never heard a squeak from the UDLP of Dominica. Dr. Carissa Aitin became the Director General of PAHO, and I did not even believe they sent off a, a congratulatory note. The same obtained with Irwin Larrock while he served as Secretary General of CARICOM. Not even at these moments of national glory could the opposition in Dominica have lifted its game and presented a united front. These are the reasons I am calling tonight for a national reset. These are the reasons why, whether or not the United Workers Party is represented in Parliament, I shall make an attempt to engage the new leadership of that party in my capacity as Prime Minister. They have a large percentage of support in this country, and even though their outdated leadership opted not to contest seats in these elections, I recognize that I'm going to need all hands on deck as we undertake to lift off from the bludgeoning effect of successive hurricanes, COVID-19, and now this global food chain crisis that is taking prices of basic items beyond the reach of average consumers in all these Caribbean islands. So these elections, ladies and gentlemen, will hopefully usher in a new era of Dominican public and private sector cooperation as well as greater and more meaningful dialogue among political parties. I have made clear, I have made clear, I will not be here for very long, but I want to leave a functioning Dominica for my successor. I want to leave a Dominica that works for children to grow up in, study, and work. 
This election, this election is about a national reset. I forgive those elements of the opposition who are having withdrawal symptoms from not being able to draw a salary from parliament for doing nothing for the people they were elected to represent. Their idea of parliamentary representation is opposing everything going on in the country and inciting violence whenever and however possible. I am tired of the hate and divisiveness that this outgoing generation promulgated. It is frustrating not, to ha not having a leader of an opposition party whom you can call and discuss issues of national interest or importantly, national security with. I am hoping that come January 2023, sectoral leaders would be able to sit around a table and discuss Dominica and options ahead going forward. That is why I'm looking forward to the outcome of these elections tomorrow evening. I want supporters and well-wishers of this Dominican Party government to go out early and cast your ex by the shoe. Do not, do not touch, do not touch the lines. Put your ex smack in the middle next to the shoe. I want Dominicans to vote tomorrow and spread the message that we are not who and we, that we are not who and we are not how we have been defined over the years by the opposition forces in this country. I want a peaceful day of voting tomorrow. I want you to go out and demonstrate to the observers that democracy is alive and well in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Do not gather in groups while within the 100 yards area. If you are not quite sure how to place your ex, ask the presiding officer for help. Don't be ashamed. If you do not know how, ask someone tonight or ask the presiding officer tomorrow. I want the world to follow. I want the world to follow the process tomorrow. I want international networks to see how business is conducted in Dominica, and how this country has been repeatedly black-eyed by those who believe this is the way to act as an opposition. They are aligned to the opposition in St. Lucia, but that opposition took its licks and went on its way the very next day. They are aligned to the opposition in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That opposition took its fifth straight beating and they accepted the defeat and went about their business the normal way two days later. But here in Dominica, every election, there must be confusion. I want the observers to look tomorrow and see how our people conduct themselves. We are doing nothing different this year than in previous years, ladies and gentlemen. I have said, I have said repeatedly, we will make whatever changes are necessary. Indeed, I hope to have the sole commission's report in by January or February, and to have the document as approved by the same observers, tabled in Parliament and acted upon by Easter of 2023. So the changes that we all agree would be helpful will be made and in a timely manner before the next general elections due in 2027. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe that, <laughs> I believe that with the change of leadership of the UWP, we may be able to get a more constructive attitude emanating from them. So my dear people tonight, these now immortal words of Michael Jackson, this is it. This is it tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We have presented you with a slate of very competent and motivated candidates. They are all ready to hit the road and effect meaningful change in this country. I want you to go out tomorrow. Go out tomorrow and vote happily for them. Give them massive 
victories tomorrow at the polls. Go out in your respective constituencies and vote for the candidates of the Dominica Labour Party. And let us together join forces in January 2023 for the building of a dynamic new Dominica. I, I may not be there I may not be there for the entire journey, but I assure, I, I, but I assure you, I shall be there to get the process off to a sound and solid start. I love Dominica. I love, I love Dominica. I believe in Dominica. And I shall forever remain in the service of Dominica. Wherever I go, whatever I do, Dominica shall always be home to me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for 22 years of opportunity, my dear people. Thank you. Thank you for believing in me and supporting me over the years. This This most likely will be my final platform speech as a candidate. I want you to know that I am truly grateful to the opportunity you have provided me. It has not been easy. It has not been easy. Modern nature has been a bit tough on us. Human failings and human creations have not helped any. But we have survived as a country. We have thrived, and I am satisfied that we are ending 2022, optimistic of the road that lies ahead in 2023. I shall start the process with you, but I want you to continue to make, I want you to continue to work to make Dominica the best, the very best that it can be. Thank you, my dear people. Go out tomorrow, go out tomorrow and vote for our candidates, vote for all 15 of them and give us this opportunity to serve you once again. Vote tomorrow, vote tomorrow.
vote tomorrow and give me this final opportunity to position this country for great things to come. I cherish you, my brothers and sisters. I love you dearly. Go out tomorrow and vote for candidates of the Dominican Labour Party. And let us all approach 2023 with confidence and resolve to make life better for each and every one of us who call this beautiful land our home. Thank you very much. Get home safely and tomorrow vote, vote, vote for the candidates of the Dominica Labour Party. Put your ex by the shoe. Please go out to vote. Vote for the candidates of the Dominican Labour Party. Put your ex by the shoe, and everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. I thank you. I thank you very much. Love you always. God bless you. And God bless the Dominica Labour Party. God bless our beautiful country, Dominica. God bless. Thank you very much.